Hi, I'm Olga Mali and this is Math Talk. My guest is Tai Lewis, student of Sussex County Community College. Hi, Tai. Hi. Hi, good to have you again here helping me. Uh, today we are going to show you how to complete the square. Students sometimes have troubles with uh, this procedure and procedure is very important because it can be used in different areas. It can be used to solve quadratic equations or graph parabolas or even solving integrals in calculus. We will start with geometric representation of the idea. Let's say we have expression x squared plus 6 x and we want to complete the square of this expression let's do this let's break down 6 x into two equal parts 3 x plus 3 x and here I have this x squared now I will use different geometric shapes I will use a square with the side x so this is x and this side is x so area of this square area of this square will be just x times x which is x squared so this is this term now let's talk about term 3x can i create a small rectangle here like this with side 3 so this side is x what, what yeah what is the area of this rectangle so in this case the area would be 3x exactly now we'll use another term i will create another rectangle here we'll here with the side 3 3 again so this side is 3 so this side is still x because this rectangle is sitting on this side of our square so what is the area of this rectangle so it would also be 3x okay now, great now let's look at this picture what is missing for us to complete this large square Ty, do you see that just this little square is missing yeah what is the size of this little square so there would be three by three yes yeah. so the size of this little square will be three three by three three by three so that means the area of this little square, I will just do it like this, will be what? It would be 3 times 3, which equals 9. Yeah, so this is 3, three. three squared. Okay, great. So, do we see that all these four areas will make area of a large triangle? La la large large square. square. Sorry, large square. Yeah, thank you. So... From another point of view, if from another point of view, if we look at this square, what's this side? This side is x plus three. X plus three. What about this side? This side's also going to be x plus three. So area of our large square will be x, x plus, plus three, three times x, x plus three. three. Or we can write that this is x, x plus three squared. squared. From another point of view, we said that all these four areas, this one and this one, gives us together the same area. So we can write that this will be x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 3 squared. So now, do we see that we started with this expression, x squared plus 6x, which is the same as x squared plus 3x plus 3x. And we just needed to add this 3 squared to have our square completed and to get a form which is actually called perfect square trinomial form. Now let's have a look at an example how to solve quadratic equation using completing the square procedure. So Ty, I will need your help. I will be writing my rules here and you will be doing example on the right side of the board. We are solving equation which is written in standard form x squared plus bx plus c equal to zero so standard form means we have zero on the right side so 
we are going to work with this equation x squared plus 6x plus 1 equal to 0. So step number 1. What we want to do? We want to isolate isolate the term x squared plus 6x on one side. So that so, means we need to remove that, uh, name, that one. Okay, great. So this is step number one. Step number two. Let's find the expression b over 2. So that was b here, bx. Okay, so we will find b over 2 and we will break down, break down our term bx into two equal parts, b over 2x plus b over 2x. Okay, so Ty, what is b over 2 in that case? So b over 2, this is b right here. This is 6, is, yeah. Yeah, this is b. So this would be 6 over 2, which equals 3. Okay, so that means we can write it also, to break it down, uh, we can write x squared plus 6x, and we break it down into two parts, 3x and 3x, and we will just rewrite the other terms of our equation. So that's how we do it. Okay, next step, step number 3. Step number three, we will find, find b over 2 squared, add, add it to both sides, to both sides. Okay, so what is b over 2 squared in our case? So this would be 9 b over 2, because b over 2 is 3, b over 2 squared would be 9. Yeah, so we can write here x squared plus 3x plus 3x, and 9 is our 3 squared. So we can write here, we can write 3 squared, adding 3 squared here, but why do we need to add it to both sides? So we can keep the equation balanced. Okay, great. So this 9 is the same as 3 squared. So we're adding it to both sides, not to uh, ruin our equation. Okay, great. So what will be our next step? I want to rewrite the expression which we've got on the previous page. So that was step number three. We add term b over 2 squared to both sides. And the expression we've got is x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 3 squared equals to negative 1 plus 3 squared. Next step will be to complete the square using our b over 2 term. We'll write complete the square, the square with b over 2. What does it mean? What was our b over 2? It was 3. So all these four terms will become just completed square x plus 3 squared. So we're getting perfect square trinomial. Well, on the right side, whatever we get, negative 1 plus 9 will give me 8. So we got our completed square. It's easy to understand. Whatever number you have here, 3, 3, 3, the same number will be in these parentheses. Now, before I forget, something interesting. I hope you noticed that uh, for completing the square, we use the expression x squared plus bx. That's what we are using. Coefficient of x squared is 1. What to do if coefficient of x squared is not 1? Say we have an equation 
2x squared plus 6x plus 1 equal to 0. Well, we can just get rid of this too. We just divide each and every term on both sides by 2. We will get x squared plus 3x plus 1 half equal to 0. And then we just continue our work according to the steps. Okay, let's go back to our problem. So we've got equation. x plus 3 squared equals 2, 8. And now we are going to solve it. And to solve it, we are going to use square root property. So solve equation by square root property. So our equation was x plus 3. Our equation was x plus 3 squared equals 2, 8. So how to solve it by square root property? Okay, so you just take the square root of both sides. So this would be x, bring us to x plus 3 equals. Now, here's the thing to get interesting. We can't just say the square root of 8, so we have to do plus or minus mm -hmm. square root of 8. And, and then we, we need to simplify that square root of 8, right? Yes, well, first let's maybe do this. You're subtracting 3? Okay, we yeah. can subtract. So it'll be plus or minus, and then we can also simplify this. So this would be 2 times the square root of 2 minus 3. Great, but we can just rewrite it as uh, negative 3 plus minus 2 root 2 to start from rational part, and then this is the irrational part. So this will be a solution to our quadratic equation. Now, if you don't have equation, you can use a completion the square procedure for other purposes. You can... Uh, use it to fit in some integration formulas or maybe you want to find vertex form of a quadratic function let's say we have quadratic function like this x squared minus 14x plus 48 so vertex form looks like this f of x equals a x minus h squared plus k so vertex will have coordinates h k h k so how to convert this expression to this form we are going to use the same idea we will complete the square so we break down 14 x into two equal parts but just now we are going to work with subtraction we will have 7 x we will have 7 x plus 48 so Ty, now what do we need to add here to complete the square what is missing 49 which means 7 squared right so yeah. we got this 7 here and we want to add we want to add 7 squared i can add negative 7 squared but it's exactly the same as 7 squared but if i just add 7 squared will i change my original expression here yes so what do we need to do so you would have to add 7 squared to the, to the function, to f of x. And then I need to subtract it. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm just adding. So it's not my function anymore. So I need to subtract it as well. And this is our 48. So in this case, I'm adding what I want. I'm adding this 7 squared to complete the square. And I have to subtract it to keep my original function unchanged. So now these four terms will help me to complete the square, but now it goes with minus x minus 7 squared. And then I have here minus 49 plus 48, which I can rewrite as x minus 7 squared minus 1. So now we have our function written in vertex form. And from here we can see vertex. Coordinates of vertex would be... 7, 7, negative 1. And if we need to fit it into integration formula, we can do that. I hope that helped. Thank you, Ty. Thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. That was Math Talk and Olga Mali.